Did you just get a 3D printer? Well, congratulations, you're in for a good time. You're gonna be able to do a lot of really cool things with this new tool that you have. But even nowadays, it can be a little bit difficult to get started, so that's why I'm making this video to help you get the most out of your brand new 3D printer. So the first thing that you need to understand is that 3D printing is kind of a three-step process. You've got making or acquiring the 3D models, preparing those 3D models for 3D printing using a slicer, we'll talk about that later, and then running the 3D printer. That's loading filament and doing anything that you need to to get the 3D printer up and running. And most of the time, that's the order that you're gonna do these steps, but I'm gonna teach you how to use your 3D printer kind of in reverse order. We're gonna start with how to run the 3D printer. Now, if you have one of these older style 3D printers, like this Ender 3 here, you may have to start by leveling your bed. And you'll know that you do because it's got these knobs underneath it that when you twist them, the corner of the bed will go higher or lower depending on how you twist it. Now, the thing to remember about leveling your bed is that it has nothing to do with actual leveling. So you don't need one of these. Leveling is a bit of a misnomer. The idea is to actually tram your bed. That is to say, you need the movement system and your bed to be moving together. And it doesn't matter whether it's level to the ground or tilted or hanging on the ceiling, it just has to move together. So the word should properly be tram. Now, I'm not going to go into detail in this video about leveling your bed because not everybody needs to do that anymore. So let's move on to starting your first 3D print. Now, almost all 3D printers come with some form of removable media with them. And it might be a USB stick like this, or it might be an SD card, either micro or otherwise. But either way, these have a couple of things on them. First of all, they have a test print on them, and that's what we're going to check out first. But there's also software and copies of the user manual in PDF format on these, so don't lose this memory stick. You're going to need it later. But for now, we're going to start a 3D print. And that involves loading some filament. Your 3D printer also hopefully came with either a sample or a full spool or a sample spool of filament. This thin noodle of plastic that is the material that all 3D prints on these sort of 3D printers are made of. So we're going to start by taking this filament and loading it into your 3D printer. And the way that you do that is going to be different on each 3D printer. So for that step, check your manual. Then once you've got the filament loaded, and you'll know that it's loaded because it will actually be coming out of the nozzle. If it's not coming out of the nozzle, then keep doing the load procedure until it does. And if it's getting jammed, it might be a good idea to take the clippers that came with your 3D printer and clip your filament at a 45 degree angle so it comes to a good little point and try it again. Once you got that filament loaded, then you're gonna go ahead and start your first sample print. And again, the exact way that you start that print is going to be different for each 3D printer, but most of them it involves interacting with the menu, choosing your print and starting it. So congrats, you've got your first 3D print, but now how do you 3D print the stuff that you want to 3D print and where do you find those things? Well, let's go back to those first and second steps, finding or making 3D print files and preparing them for 3D printing. Remember I said that on that removable media, there's a piece of software. So you're gonna to wanna to take that card and stick it in your computer, and then you're going to want to load up the slicer on your computer. A slicer is a piece of software that turns 3D models into instructions that the 3D printer can follow. Now, it does seem like these days that Every 3D printer has their own slicer, but it's actually not that big a deal. I mean, they all copy each other's homework pretty liberally, so for the most part, they're all very similar. So let's take a look at an example of one of the slicers that I use to show you how to prepare your models for 3D printing. Now, to begin with, we're going to need a 3D model to 3D print, and I could make a whole video about this subject, but I'm gonna keep this discussion simple and say, just go to Yegi. Yegi is a place where you can search all the places that 3D print files are kept all at the same time and just search for something there. So for this example, I'm gonna say, you know, I got a thing that makes plastic things. I want to make some building blocks. So I'm going to search for building blocks and see what it finds. All right, so immediately we have some examples of different building blocks here. This is all very cool and there's lots of them to look through. Be sure to, you know, continue to click through. But right here I see an example. There we go. These look fun. These look like an interesting building block. Well, hold on just one second because there's something wrong with what we're seeing here. What is it? Well, this picture here isn't a picture. It's a, it's a render on a computer. These blocks, I don't see 
any pictures of them printed. And in fact, if I scroll down and try to find pictures that somebody else printed, there's none. These have never been 3D printed, which means that you are probably going to want to be a little bit careful. Now, maybe later you don't mind being the first person to make a 3D print out of something that's never been 3D printed before. But if this is your first 3D print, you don't want your first 3D print to be a first 3D print of something. So let's pass up on the ones that haven't already been printed by other people. Let's try another one. Yeah, that's another one that I don't see any prints. I just see renders. Ah, here's a great set. This set of blocks, look at this. This is 100% a 3D print. And if we look around, we can see more pictures of 3D prints of them. If we go down into the download section, we can see that there are lots and lots of files. There's video instructions. Man, these printer blocks, these are fantastic. I'd like to shake the hand of the guy who created them. But okay, let's put aside the silliness. Printer blocks are pretty dang good and they're great for starter prints. And even more than that, recently I've extended printer blocks with a modular organizational system. Yes, they are now boxes that you can put stuff in. So let's let's download some Stora blocks and do that. So I'm going to go ahead and click download. It'll take me down here and I'm just going to say download all models. Click that and then it'll give me all of the files and I can dive into it and check them out. So in this example, we're going to be using Creality Print as our slicer, but like I said, don't worry about it. They all copy each other's notes pretty well. They're, they all have pretty much the same settings. The important stuff will remain the same here. And I'm going to model a way of approaching this that I see a lot of people do that's wrong and show you how to fix it. So to begin with, we've got here the file that I've downloaded and it might look different for you. In fact, it might look like a directory. In fact, I'm going to have to fudge it a little bit because I'm going to have to right mouse click and open with Windows X. Ah, there it goes. And it just navigates us into it and we can see, oh, look at all the files here. No problem. And I'm probably going to want to have one of these bigger bins here, maybe the uh, 39 by 39 by 60. Great. And I'm going to take that and drag it over here into Creality and it won't, it won't, it won't move. It didn't work. Okay. Well, fine. I'll just hit file open and go into my downloads and I don't even see the file that I, I, I swear I downloaded it here. The files are all here. What's the problem? Well, the problem is that what we saw before wasn't actually a file folder. It looked like a file folder, but it was actually a zip file, which contains all of the files. And a lot of times windows will just let you click into it and open it like it's a file, but it's not. For you, you can right mouse click it and choose extract. I don't have that option because I've installed another program called 7-Zip. So I'll use 7-Zip and say extract to here. And it will take that zip file and turn it now into a directory. And now this directory, you see the directory is visible here. And we can click on it. And here are all the STL files that we were looking for. Or we can go back to doing it the way that we did before. Go in here. Look at all these, just make sure you're not in the zip file. And then once we've got the one that we want, like I said, I probably am going to want a uh, 60 by 60 or 55 by 55 by 60. There we go. Just take that, drop it in. There we go. This one, this one will be perfect as a pen holder. And then we can go ahead and prepare this for 3D printing. So now you guys know how to get app files that you downloaded from other directories and get them into your slicer. But what do you do with them next? Well, at this point, it's really simple. Don't complicate things. Once you've got the 3D file in here, what you need to do is slice it up. And there's a big button over there that says slice. So just hit that button. Now, after it finishes processing, what it's doing is it's looking at the 3D file and it's slicing it into thin layers and it's imagining, well, not say imagining, but it's processing how it would draw each one of those layers. And usually your slicer will swap you over to a view a preview of the 3d print if it doesn't there's usually a button to say preview the 3d print whatever you do always preview your 3d print and then you want to find the part of your view that you can scrub down to the beginning because you want to check your first layer now what's checking your first layer look like well it looks like this I want to take a look at that first layer. Now this first layer looks great but what if I'm looking at this and there's just one tiny part that's touching onto the build plate and everything else is just kind of hovering and I don't see it until I go up a couple of layers. Well, that indicates that there's some error in the file and that you're going to need to fix it. But by looking at your first layer and then even running that up just a little bit and imagining the layers as they're printing and thinking, am I, am I seeing anything that would cause me to worry? No, everything sits on top of something. Everything's in fact, this is a, this is a beautiful, nice little organic. There's no hovering parts. 
it's great. Once you've seen the preview and said, okay, I think this will print okay, that is when you send it over to your 3D printer. And you can do that a couple of different ways. One way that you can do that is by saving it onto that removable drive, like I showed you before, and then moving that from your computer over to your 3D printer and hitting go. Or you might be able to beam it over Wi-Fi if you set up your 3D printer on your Wi-Fi and that's a capability that it has. Now, I didn't go over that in this video, but your manual should, so check it out. But that's all there is to it. We've prepared a model for 3D printing. Now we can run it and you're 3D printing. So there we go. You have learned how to find or create 3D models, prepare them for 3D printing, and run your 3D printer. So now anytime you want something with your 3D printer, you just have to repeat these steps and you will be in endless Christmas. Man, I love this hobby. Of course, I wasn't able to go into detail in this video about the specifics of your 3D printer. Many 3D printers these days have the ability to connect to the Wi-Fi network in your home so that you can beam 3D prints to them and you don't need to worry about carrying physical media around. Trust me, it's a great option if you have that one. But you've got the basics so that you can start 3D printing today and begin your 3D printing journey. And hey, if you make something cool, why not come and join me on Discord, where I have a Discord server of great people who are doing great things with 3D printing and helping others do great things as well. I hope to see you there. But that's it for this video. I want to remind us. But that's it for this video. I want to remind you that you are a child of God, so you're special to me. So take care of yourself. And if you can, someone else too. I'll see you next time. Don't need to clap for the end.